Welcome to Mentality Meets. My name is Peter Larkham and I've been delivering mental health training for the last 10 years and more. Uh, I've also been doing youth work and emotional literacy with young people since 1997. So I've been doing this a long time. And the biggest thing of what I do is I try and help people understand their mental health journey because one size does not fit all and we all have very different ways of experiencing our mental health. But in the light of COVID-19 and our current lockdown, uh, I am believing that more people are becoming aware of their mental health journey than ever before. And so Mentality Meets is simply about meeting people with lived experience of mental health illnesses, looking at how they have uh, coped during that time, how they are on a journey of recovery and that recovery is possible. And also to be talking about Mentality, which is an online one hour uh, video training about your mental health. Learning about the tools that we need to look after ourselves better. And also, what do we begin to notice in other people? What do we notice in ourselves? And potentially most importantly, if we begin to feel like we're struggling, where do we get help and support? So this is Mentality Meets, and there are already people queuing up and lining up to come in. So we should probably click on the button and start this conversation. I really hope you enjoy Mentality Meets. So some of the guidelines uh, for today and one thing to be really well so we don't and we, do, we don't know anything about you We don't know what your mental health journey is or whether you've experienced mental health uh, experiences in the past um, And so please be aware as we talk about these different situations what's going on inside of you A um, couple of places to look for help if you need it So the, the main one that we're pushing on the mentality meets is hub of hope and it's hubofhope.co.uk and it's a fantastic website where you can put in your postcode and find the mental health provision for your local area. It's a really good resource because it also means that if you're supporting people in other areas of the country, you can put their postcode in and find the support that's around them. Uh, so it is a fantastic tool and a fantastic resource. And also please, if you need any help and support, uh, don't be afraid to call the Samaritans on 116123. And there's also a 24 seven text service available and you can text shout to 85258 and what that will do is it will send a message to someone who will then be able to get back in contact with you if you find that you are really needing some help and support. But today we are met and joined with uh, John Allison. So John Allison, can you just give us a little bit of a hello and who you are very quickly just yeah. to get you in our screens. Yeah, thank you, Peter. First of all, great to be here. And uh, I'm John Allison and I run Motion to Mind, a holistic wellbeing service. And I also served with the military for 24 years before, uh, before all this. So, yes, great to be here, to be here today. Good. You see, the fact that you are a fitness person and that you were involved with the military, this is what scares me about this session, <laughs> is that this is not a world that I know of. Uh, exercise? Yeah, no, don't really <laughs> engage. Um, and military? Certainly no idea. Um, so what I'm finding... Uh, exciting about this session I suppose as we as we kind of get things started is how mental health doesn't seem to discriminate depending on job title or role or uh, what your past experience has been at all and um, yeah so I'm quite excited with where this goes today John uh, I Definitely. hope you are too very much so yeah so I think we've got a, a good number of us on the call uh, at the moment so yeah, so the, the opening question was, how many people are you in lockdown with? Um, so Chandy's got just my mum and my sister and me. So that's quite a nice little thing. Andy says that it's me, my missus, my daughter <laughs> and my dog, which I painted. You painted your dog. <laughs> OK. Um, sorry, Andy, I'm going to have to meet you. I want to find out more about this painted dog. What, what, what's going on there? It was um, yeah, a complete accident. I painted the skirting board and... Uh, <laughs> Hello, John. How are you? Yeah, complete accent. Painted the skirting <laughs> board, and um, okay. he just had to lie on a freshly painted skirting board. So, <laughs> brilliant. Okay, I'm busy for a few I'm days. Gonna, I'm going to meet you again, Andy. Okay, brilliant. Um, so, painted dog. Uh, so, four hubby, two teenagers, and a dog. Uh, I have I have three small people, so there's five of us in our house. Um, me and my wife and my three kids, a seven-year-old, a four-year-old, and a two-year-old. Um, and as a youth worker of, of about 20 years, teenagers, I feel like I get a little bit better than, than small people. But again, I have no idea uh, about kind of parenting teenagers <laughs> as a youth worker, which meant I didn't have to really parent them at all. 
Um, so how it must be when you are with your teenagers. We're going through four pints of milk every two days. Uh, wowza. <laughs> I can imagine there's a lot of food that's getting munched uh, as well alongside that. But anyway, let's kick this off. I will keep uh, welcoming people in as they come. So everybody, now that you have found your chats, it is basically so as you can uh, just chat your way through this session. So anything that John and I talk about that interests you, please do feel free to uh, put it up in the in the chat bar and we'll kind of allow that to be going. Uh, and then I'll refer back to it every now and then as we go on and see where this conversation takes us. So John, if you can, mm. can you just give us a little bit of a, an introduction to you the context of what you are doing now uh, and basically your journey uh, to get here. That would be great. In five minutes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So, I mean, certainly, as I say, you know, I left school at 16 and um, I literally I joined the army uh, at 16, left school. I just turned turn this off before it, keeps, if it pings in the, in the computer. Um, yeah. So, left school at 16 and um, uh, and then joined the army 24 years later, popped out of the, uh, out of the green machine. And um, I don't oh, sorry, turn this off. Get this thing off. Technology. Yeah, and um, essentially, I long story short, I left the army and I, I became a health and wellbeing manager for five years, working with two agencies in London. And um, but also, I, I had the the challenge of transition, uh, major transition from the from the army to civilian life. And for me, that was um, I didn't really expect it to be so challenging, uh, to be honest. And uh, you know, I think um, you know we were certainly. Uh, we were well, obviously well trained in the military to deal with, with uh, being away on uh, high threat deployments, etc. Um, but certainly I, I wasn't, uh, I didn't necessarily feel prepared for what civilian life would, would, um, would, would throw at me. So yes, it was um, certainly that I, I had that experience of dealing with transition and uh, I learned a lot of lessons along the way, uh, for sure. Uh, I learned a lot of lessons uh, along the way when I was a health and wellbeing manager and organizing programs to, to, to help employees. Um, both mentally and physically so it's been it's certainly been quite a journey now i run motion to mind which is my holistic well-being service and essentially i am working with uh, with employees uh, certainly who are obviously now all working from home doing a lot of coaching in that area helping them to to, to problem solve and move forward and also i do i do work with various private clients and um a lot of my work has involved in the past taking them out in nature and getting them moving and getting them out of a, a depleting environment and certainly helping them to, to embrace nature and find new resources in many ways. Amazing. So, um, John, with all these different chats, I ask people mm. to think about uh, the things that are burning inside of them that they want to be able to share with other people uh, in the world of COVID, in the world of mental health, or just mm. in things that are interest, of interest to you. So is there anything that you've got kind of going on at the moment um, that it's just kind of really burning inside of you that you want to just chat about and, and explore further. Yeah, I think for me, I, certainly that the language that we're using, I, I feel sometimes isn't helping people, to, helping, helping people to, to help themselves. You know, it's not um, all the work I do, I try and sort of underpin it with the sort of the, the ethos that I want to help people to empower themselves. And that's the most important thing because and unfortunately people tend to, to give, to almost to give power to other people. So, for example, you know, if we want to go to go to keep fit, people think we have to go and, go and use the gym and, and uh, or buy equipment, for example. And you know, I fully appreciate people like we enjoy the gym. Obviously, I run the street gym as well, which is which is actually using what we already have around us. Um, but equally, I you know, I see people who, you know, if if we if something happens to us, and, and let's forget you know, COVID nineteen for one minute, and think about you know, if, if we have if, if we have flu or something similar, the first thing we tend to do is reach for the for a pill or or, or head for the for the doctor's surgery. So, you know, quite often we're, we're giving a lot of power to other people. And what I try and do in the work with, with my private clients or with employees is actually try and give them tools and resources to help them empower themselves. So the language we're using a lot, I'm seeing a lot of, lot of language um, at the moment, things like, you know, talking about mental health crisis and um, talking about, uh, you know, a lot of, lot of really negative things. Now, clearly we don't want to be, you know, in a world of positivity all the time. We need to be, be objective and, and, and uh, you know, realistic. But the reality is, you know, we were saying before that, that there are a lot of people doing some incredible things and, and people really surviving and, and, and moving forward at this moment in time. Um, you know, I was saying, saying today that literally, you know, Thursday we, we go outside, we celebrate the NHS, you know, we, we literally, you go outside and bang the saucepan a few times and you're meeting people you haven't seen before, you know, in your neighbourhood. 
So the, you know, neighborhoods are, are, are getting stronger. People are getting resourceful. People are, are, are learning to use stuff they've got around them at home to work out, you know, all these things. So, um, you know, there's a lot of good stuff happening right now. And I think we need to really, really focus on that if possible. All right then. So quick question out to everybody. Uh, so an opportunity again to stick down on your chats. Um, what are you doing that is different now than it has been before? So John was just mentioning about uh, going out on a Thursday night and clapping and meeting new people. Um, I also know that John is a, a, an energetic kind of person. So is anyone doing exercise uh, like they've never done before? Uh, I'm engaging on my daily walks, um, but I still haven't decided to run anywhere. That's, that's one thing which I have still got to work up to. Um, luckily, my two-year-old, I don't have to run and I can keep up with him. So this is a good thing for me. Um, but yeah, so what are you guys up to? Uh, anything new over this last kind of week or so that you've engaged with? Uh, give us some ideas on the chat of what you've been up to. So John, um, in this kind of conversation then around, uh, around mental health, mm. you're talking about kind of the language of it. Um, and mental health and mental health illnesses. And what is it about that and the context mm. of that that you're, you're yeah. finding this frustrating, is a, I suppose? This is, a, this is a great question. So, you know, we often refer to, refer to mental illness and, and that sort of thing. And, you know, straight away, when you, when you say to somebody, you've got a mental, you're mentally ill, then, you know, that, that, that's almost disempowering the person straight away. And, you know, essentially, it's... Um, yeah, quite, more often than not, a lot of these, a lot of things that happen to people happen to, because of their experiences. It happens to, to things that happened around them. Um, you know, people dealing with abnormal situations, and you know, people aren't necessarily ill. They, they just haven't been necessarily been trained to deal with certain things or haven't experienced these things before. Um, and I, I mentioned to you to briefly that you know when I left when I, when I left the army, I found myself in a situation where multiple plates started to spin, and um, essentially, you know, I. I, I didn't really realize at the time, but I was burning myself out. You know, I was, I was working till two o'clock in the morning. I was trying to make sense of self-employment after leaving the army. Um, I was living in the, the wrong environment for, for a time. I was you know, by myself on my own in the middle of nowhere. Um, and I was worried about my father. You know, I lost my mother and brother while I was serving in the military. So all these things were going on. But also I was doing things like um, try and make myself sleep at night. I was running up and down hills on, a, on, a, on an evening. And uh, that was literally making me more and more wired. So the, 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 the long story short, I literally I saw went to see the GP, and um, you know I wasn't sleeping, and she said she gave me sleeping tablets and diazepam and all this sort of thing, and um, and told me that I was I probably had generalized anxiety disorder, um, and you know that's clearly a, a label that people can apply, but the reality was I was knackered, you know okay. I was I, I was knackered. That's that's the basis of it. You know my my battery had run low, I was running out, and I wasn't doing things which would, which would recharge that battery. And, um, and, you know, and I, I, I took stock at, I looked at, looked at life and I started taking action. You know, I'd had, had an issue with HMRC at one point. They sent me a letter saying I owed them a grand and a half. And, you know, I buried it for three days. And so, of course, the heart rate goes up. Anxiety levels are through the roof. And um, but then, I, then I found the phone number, made the phone call. And suddenly phew, that, that, that weight comes off the shoulders. So just taking simple action, you know, um, I, could pay off in, I, could, I could pay it off in installments. The point I'm making there is that uh, you know I was doing things which were, uh, were were discharging my battery and not many yes. things at the time which were actually helped me to recharge that energy. So, okay, so in the context of, of kind of the language, is that sometimes that when we talk about mental health illnesses, mm. we kind of automatically seem to jump to disorders and and mm. the really bad stuff. Yeah. Um, and we we're yeah. touching on this in in the last conversation with Henry about um, yeah, there's almost a hierarchy of mental health illnesses mm -hmm. and you haven't experienced it until you've gone to that <laughs> extreme and yeah, it's almost yeah. as if my mental health isn't valuable or worth talking mm. about unless i've kind of reached the hierarchy mm. uh which which in essence kind of gets us to a place where we begin to outdo one another with how bad situations are and we talked about this mm. in, in lots of different settings about yeah, yeah. the mentality meets um and in essence, kind of what you're, what I think you're saying, and clarify if, if I'm wrong, is that sometimes it's about realizing that we are exhausted and that mm -hmm. our our internal battery is running low, yeah, yeah, and needing to find ways to recharge. Mm -hmm. And coming back to kind of what what people are, are doing at the moment, I just want to run through some of these because um, Melissa is doing a driveway social 
with pizza. <laughs> I love that idea. Love it. Um, basically, anything <laughs> with pizza is a good yeah. idea. Um, and he says, just talking to strangers and being spoken to by mm -hmm. strangers. Uh, yeah, because we've got this little bit of stranger <laughs> danger, haven't we? It's like, oh, no, you mustn't talk to people. But sometimes when you just say, hey, how are you doing? It, it allows people to, to just be talking about it, which I think is brilliant and wishing each other well. Um, Chandy says that I, I do 5K every morning along the seafront and cliff tops in Bournemouth. Dude, that sounds like an awesome <laughs> Good to be running. Um, but again, it's still, it's got the three letter word of run in there, which just does, doesn't, <laughs> doesn't float my boat. Um, and Andrew's just got weekly reflections. So looking at the highlights, looking at the low, low lights and just some simple goals to be working off. Uh, and also coming off Facebook, which I find fascinating. Sometimes <laughs> social media is a really toxic environment, you know? Um, and Marshall would say, hey, Pete, uh, can I catch up with you? Oh, that, hang on, that's, a, that's just to me. Don't worry. <laughs> um, so, I mean, we're talking about, therefore, recharging yeah. and doing things that help us cope. But what happens when our coping mechanism is a, isn't good for us? And I mean, we, we were chatting just before this, and we were talking mm. about what happens if my coping mechanism is actually that I drink more alcohol or eat more chocolate or um, the other thing that I was saying is that actually when I, when I get to bed and my brain is still whirring, I jump onto Netflix and I watch mm. something on Netflix to try I, and I think, uh, switch what, me what, off. But then all the stimulation yeah. from Netflix is making yeah. me more... Uh, and, just just, and, just yeah. a point, point, point that Angela, I think was Angela raised about um, reflection. You know, it's, um, that's really valuable because Sometimes, and it goes ties in with what you're asking as well, Peter. Is it you know sometimes we don't actually we're not, almost we're almost not aware of what we're doing. Um, we're sort of we're drifting through life and we're not actually aware of, of the things that we're actually are actually going on. So taking time to reflect and actually uh, consider the lessons that we're learning from 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 you know, good and bad at this moment in time is really important. Um, because you know, in my mind, in a way, if you imagine that this is like the the, the sea when the sea goes out, it exposes the rocks. And the, and the rocks can be vulnerabilities in this case. And, you know, it's very rare for all of us to be challenged like this uh, in such a way. And quite simply, a lot of us aren't trained for it. And, um, but the reality is that, the, the, you know, the, the water's gone out, but it will come back. But for now, it's exposing some vulnerabilities that in, in all of us. Um, but equally, the vulnerabilities are things we can work on and things we can develop. And, and, and what I'd like to get, get so, so to be able to reflect on, on events and things that have happened to us and, and, and lifestyles is so important because then we generate awareness um, and then we can take, st take steps to actually to, to amend, amend these things. But one thing I say as well, you know, I'm very keen to sort of use the, the term training rather than therapy, because um, I think therapy sometimes is a, is a disempowering term for some people. Um, and I explained to uh, uh, people before that in the military, we were, we were highly trained to deal with, you know, with, with high threat situations and high pressure situations. But equally, there are times when you, know, you, you, you experience a situation you, wouldn't, you weren't trained for. But you know, the point I'm getting to is, is actually that we were that, that typically um, people at the moment are uh, are anxious or concerned because ne they haven't necessarily experienced this, this before, so that they haven't experienced that sort of training um, to deal with this, this sort of situation. And having worked in Bosnia, uh, bomb disposal work in Bosnia and all over the world, you know, you you met people who had nothing, just the clothes on their back, um, and people become very resilient, and they and they you know, ultimately um, some tragedies as well. People people learn a lot and they move on and and. and you know, the diversity of what they went through becomes a real, a real model for growth. But to me, you know, it's, um, this is about training and you know, self-reflection is important, not too, not too deeply, but self-reflection is important to look at what's working, what isn't working, why isn't it working, and what, what is working, and let's do more of it. So, can I, I want to, this is probably going to oversimplify things, so uh, if it does, I apologise, um, no and try and get me back on, back on track. Um, because I, I love that, self-reflection because sometimes we just need to acknowledge that this is not a great situation and it's really hard and really tough um and in that acknowledging is there a part of our brain which can click into okay so actually i have to now let go of what life mm. was because it's not like that right now yeah. And sometimes by trying to almost recreate what it was, we actually put ourselves in, in even more of a mental distress mm. because we, we can't get it and that frustrates us. Whereas if we can come to terms with the fact that actually, for now, whether we like it or not, this is our, our current normal, um, and allow our brain just to settle with that in that self-reflection, so as we can then begin to say, right, so what are the things we don't like 
and how do I avoid those things? And what are the things I do like and how do I do more of those things? Does that kind of work or have I oversimplified it? Yeah, I think, I think again, in, in the military, for example, you know, we would we face a situation which was um, potentially quite dire. Um, and, you know, you, you, could, you could sort of sit down on the ground and, and uh, admit defeat. Or you could say, right, okay, what, you know, how can I solve this problem? And uh, all this issue, all, all this challenge. And a lot of the work in the military was, was stripping away the emotion, which wasn't always helpful, actually, uh, later in life, certainly. But the reality was the approach was, was one of a practical nature. You know, how do I get myself out of the situation? How, who do I need to speak to? Uh, what questions do I need to ask? And you know, how do I you know, get myself out of this? I mean, an example, a very quick example would be, I was on the glacier in South Georgia in the Antarctic, half one in the morning in a tent, and suddenly I couldn't breathe. And literally, you know, I mean, this is obviously a survival mechanism kicked in, but literally, um, I was, the four of us were nearly buried alive. And, um, you know, there was no time to think about emotions or think about, you know, the, reflecting on the past. You had to get out and, and move. If we, if we hadn't, we, we'd be dead. Probably never, never, be, never been found on the glacier. So, you know, that was an extreme example. But certainly, um, you know, in the military, we took the approach of, of okay, perhaps, you know, we'll, we'll reflect on the situation later. But, but right now, there's a job to do. There's a mission to complete. And, you know, and, and we need to look at problems, look at, or look, look at this and find solutions and move forward. Um, because, yeah. you know, there is a bit of a curve, you know, even in transition that for me, I was probably grieving for the loss of my army family for a while. Um, but as soon as I pulled myself out, out of that in some ways, and I actually thought, okay, you know, what skills do I need to learn in, in this new civilian world? Who can I speak to? Um, I start to move forward, you know, and it's, uh, and it's the same now because, I mean, right now, you know, the, the WHO, the, the guy was speaking the other day and, and saying to us, look, you know, this is going to be in place for a while. You know, social measures could be in place for, for several months. So the sooner we accept that, and it's not easy, it's, it's, it's hard. You know, my father's 88, living by himself, and I'm, I clearly have concerns about him. But the reality is, you know, it's, um, uh, as soon as we accept that, we can start to look at, okay, this is the, the situation, um, and this is my mission, I'm going to move forward. Amazing. So just some of the thoughts that are coming through is just this uh, essence of acceptance. Accept the things you cannot mm. change, but change yeah, the yeah, things yeah. you can, and have wisdom to know the difference. The Serenity yeah. poem, um, I, I just love it. Mm. Um, and and as well, but the, just healthy reflection is really helpful, but constant mm. r rumination, oh, not so yeah, much. Yeah, no, I agree. I, I, mean, I find that yeah. I think that's a great way of explaining yeah. that. Sometimes when we get so caught yeah. in that uh, r rumination, that that negative could, side of things, that can be really really yeah, detrimental. I'll quickly draw on that, Peter, because this is really important. So rumination typically occurs when 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 action isn't taking place. So we tend to, you know, rumination is often when we, when we think about the future, and that's typically anxiety, or we, we reflect on the past, which is often, often depression, or when we're feeling low. But, you know, the analogy we'd use is the boxer getting into a ring. You know, when the boxer's fighting, he's doing what, he's, you know, he's taking action and, and taking the fight to, in the ring. But perhaps walking towards the ring, you know, you may be fearful, maybe rum, even ruminating. But so, so you know, the, this is why it's, it's very important to be, you know, in, in middle ground at the moment and actually be, be grounded. Be in the moment. Deal with what. Deal with what. You know what we need to deal with immediately, uh, and move forward. And and you know, when we take take action, no matter how big or small that action is, then we find that it, that it tends to smash anxiety or, or other forms of rumination without a shadow of a doubt. I think that's great. And then Melissa's also going to put that through unexpected adversity, we often find those unknown strengths that are already yeah. within us. Spot on. Absolutely. Yeah. So and this is the thing. I mean, this, just put a brief repeat. I mean, this is the thing. So in the military, I was lucky. But, well, I was fortunate. Um, to have some incredible experiences, not all pleasant, obviously. But the reality is that every experience I had, I, I learned from it. And, you know, and the more we can learn from it, um, the, the more we can move forward. And, and you know, uh, like I say, it's a bit like the tide going out right now. It's exposing a number of rocks and of vulnerabilities. Because um, people have never been in the situation before. But mm. those vulnerabilities are, are, are almost an, they are, they are opportunities to tackle things that, that will, will serve us well for the, for the future, if they're resolved and dealt with, without a shadow of a doubt. I mean that I love I, I love that analogy. I've not I've not come across that analogy before about the, the tide going out and exposing the vulnerabilities that are going mm. on inside of us. And I think sometimes we need to get come to terms with who we are. Yeah. But sometimes we don't like who we are, you know? Um, or we don't like the person that we've suddenly become. And we've also got to understand what of who we have become is because of the extra stresses and the extra pressures. I was talking to a guy just the other day and he said, I'm more ratty, I'm more short-tempered, I'm, uh, I'm at home but not spending time with my kids, I'm, 
and just kind of listed all this stuff. And he said, this isn't who I am. Mm. And he said, I feel like I'm the closest to depression that I've ever experienced before. Um, and I just thought he, he was really clever in identifying that the, this situation isn't normal and it was mm -hmm. impacting on the person that he was becoming and he didn't like it. Yeah. And so he was trying to find ways to, to change those things. And I think it's so important to be able to do that self-reflection. Yeah, uh, I mean, I mean, this, is, this is very important. But what I'll say there, Peter, very, very, very quickly is that, again, you know, when we talk about language, it isn't just the language that we see in the media, it's the internal track that's running in our head. And this is really, really important. So right now, you know, some of us will, will use a language that's detrimental or, or some form of, we're almost like self-programming ourselves. So if we, you know, if we, you know, if we focus on the things that we don't want, then we're gonna get more of it. And then equally, if we focus on things that we do want, then it's gonna really help us to get out, get out of there and, and, and move on. Yes, absolutely. And um, Andy says, but John, do you find yourself well-equipped to deal with this lockdown following your hurry up and wait experiences in the military? <laughs> that's a great question Andy I must admit um it's, it's, it's a good point because I'll give you an example I mean I was I was um, I, I, um, one of my final deployments I was in South Asia um in the middle of nowhere in a little compound and um unfortunately uh I was in the, that particular country when when uh, a big big incident kicked off and uh we were truly in lockdown we, we weren't allowed to leave a, leave a compound within a compound for, for nearly three or four weeks um and uh, you know, it was a, we, we didn't know whether we were going to be sort of almost uh, you know held hostage or whether we were going to be used as a pawn in a very big political game, whatever. Uh, but certainly, you know, that's um, we're able to deal with that uh, using, I guess, military training and the camaraderie and and and, uh, and the skills we picked up in the military. But equally, yeah, you're right, Andy. In, in the army, as you know yourself, there were times when literally you'd be, you'd be doing nothing for, or you'd be working in in the, in the stores or cleaning equipment, and the next thing you know, all hell breaks loose and you're away. You're, you're deployed. So I think it does help you to certainly helps you to deal with the, the ebb and the flow of of a of challenge for sure for, you know for sure definitely yeah amazing so um John we're into our last four minutes of mm. our session today it's gone really quick so thank you for your Home insight by. and your wisdom yeah. um I want to ask are there any final thoughts uh in a context of how we begin to explore our own vulnerabilities uh, do you have any tips or some pointers? Uh, is there anything that we can do to begin to shift and change the whole language around mental health mm. um, and especially mental illness and trying to mental health illnesses? Um, and is there any other top tip that you may have for us? You have two minutes. Go. Yeah, I think. I mean, first of all, again, be mindful of the language of the, of the, of the language we're using ourselves is really important. If you feel yourself using using negative negative language then try and swap it you know, for, the, for the reverse. That's, that's the first thing. Also consider you know, that, um, that any adversity you're going through right now is, is almost like, or if, you, if you feel emotions or you feel um, anxious about something, it's almost a signpost telling you that you, perhaps you need to get new skills or learn or, 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 or identify resources. A lot of us have already got resources, a lot of resources that actually, and we've been through something similar maybe in the past, and it's about really reflecting on, on, how, you, on how you dealt with something in the past and what worked. And what didn't work, and then and then use the previous previous situations that you've been through in life to actually help you to move forward. Um, and then you know I think it's again you know think about this as a form of you know this is a training process. You know we're we're all learning. Again, acceptance was used today. It's an important term. Um, think of this as a, 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 a you know almost an opportunity to to learn more about yourself. Um, I often find with employees that people aren't always being true to themselves. Um, they're not always in the job they really want to be in. And um, you know. This is also a time to, to perhaps reflect on that and appreciate, you know, uh, getting the money coming in is, the, is, the, is probably the priority number one at the moment and keeping the family supported, et cetera. But equally, it's time for, to reflect on, you know, am I in the right, right, the right, right type of position, for example? Um, and everything we go through right now, every obstacle that we, we encounter and overcome is going to serve us really well for the future, without shadow of a doubt. Absolutely amazing. What a great uh, way to kind of wrap things up, John. So thank you. So ladies and gentlemen, we are at 3.28, which means that this is probably as much of a, a official ending as you're going to get. Um, so if you do need to log off, please do so. But John Knight, if you're, if you're happy, John, I'd like to just uh, explore mm. another thing for another minute or so. Yeah, of course, the problem uh, So if anyone does want to stay on, please feel free to do so. But if you do need to log out because your time allocation is up, that's absolutely fine. So thank you so much. Take care. God bless. Thanks, guys. And bye Take bye care. now. Okay, so that was as official an ending as you're going to get. Um, <laughs> so, John, I find it. I I want to. I want to begin to to try and understand this uh, 
the, the sea the sea going out analogy i think that that's such a clever way of the exposing of our vulnerability um, and most of us don't enjoy vulnerability we don't mm. we don't like that it's experience not nice. it's not nice yeah and a question that i want to mm. i want to try and explore is how do we how, how what do we need to do to get to a place where we are okay with those vulnerabilities because they are mm. part they're an intrinsic part of who yeah. we are how do we how do we allow ourselves to be vulnerable yeah. with ourselves but also with other people i love the question peter and it's for me at the moment for example i you see where this, where this is going but for me routine is really really important having a having a routine a framework to use every day uh, I, I think it's really important and um and within that framework myself personally I try and, and do something every day or certainly every other day um, that challenges me either emotionally, mentally, um, physically, or even spiritually. And it doesn't have to be, you know, in the military, we would do some, some crazy, crazy things sometimes and, and uh, climb mountains and the rest of it. It doesn't have to be that sort of challenge. It can be something really, really small. I mean, for example, um, today, I quite enjoy fixing broken mobile phones because it gives me a sense of reward. And, it, and it's, it, you have to be really focused to do it. You can't ruminate when you're fixing the broken mobile phone. And when that Apple logo pops back on again, you, 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 know, you fix the broken screen. It's a, it's a mental, a physical you know, dexterity challenge. And um, it gives you a bit, of a bit of a reward. It gives you confidence. And, and, you know, and it's a tiny little challenge. It's not going and going climbing a mountain, but it's, it's a little challenge. And even things, for example, at the moment, in this current climate, a lot of people aren't, aren't overly keen on speaking on video. They find it uncomfortable. And, uh, and guess what? You know, if this things you're finding uncomfortable uh, or don't want to face, they're often the very things things we need to be looking at, and mm. so it's like it's like a signpost. So, for example, I, I started using uh, Instagram TV uh, a few weeks ago. Never done it before, you know. I'm, I'm at forty nine, I'm in grey hair. I'm not particularly tech savvy, so I'm getting there, you know. But the reality is, I'm trying to put myself out there to learn every day to learn something new about technology or something that's going to serve me well in the coming uh, in the coming months and coming years, um, and prepare me for the future, the future way of, way of working, the new normal. Um, I'm also, you know looking at um my own vulnerabilities what, what's been exposed for example you know during this time um you know for me certainly it's uh, i do miss that social connection and, and like doing street gym with the crew in london for example um but again you know there's ways of actually re-engaging with those people uh, using social media and everything else so um but certainly you know um it's interesting because because right now it's a great time to actually to build into your daily routine little challenges that are going to take you forward and it doesn't have to be huge things but if you if you're fearful of something, you, you wouldn't believe the amount of people I work with who are, who are really scared about and fearful of public speaking. So, you know, there's no better way of, of uh, starting to overcome your fears than just by doing a little Instagram post or something similar. Start off by doing a 30 second video, you know, um, tell your mates, your mates you're going to do it to hold yourself accountable. Um, you might want to go. Are you trying uh, to tell me that I've got to start running, John? I was about to say that. <laughs> yeah. Ah, yeah. So, so, so Peter, so, so here's an example now. So this is a, a great opportunity for you to do something you haven't done before or haven't done for a while. You know, have, you, have your sports kit by your bed. So the first thing you see in the morning is your sports kit. You put the sports kit on. I know he's like, <laughs> get your sports kit on. And the thing is, you know, you're not going to go and run a marathon straight away. You're gonna, you might say to yourself, right, okay, I'm going to do a five-minute run. A five minute run. Okay. Okay. There you go. Let's uh, move on. And, 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 and also, you can, you can visualize being chased by something or by, be chased by a, a saber toothed tiger that the well being people often talk about. You know, but the reality is that, you know, it just say to yourself, you'll, you'll do two minutes because two minutes turns into, into, into 20 minutes, two hours before you know it, you're in the zone. You know what? I will never run a marathon. I've, I've kind of made that decision. That, that's a good thing. Don't say never. Uh, <laughs> run up the stairs, maybe. I might get there. Um, but guys, I just want to say thank you so much for your time. John, you've been absolutely awesome. I've been Pete Larkin. This has been John Allison. Um, and is there anything else I need to say? I'm really hoping not. But guys, take care. God bless. Keep and bye -bye. safe, guys. All the best. Thanks a lot. Well done, John. Happy days. Good job. Cheers, John. That was great. Thanks. Andy, Thanks take care. Mate. All the best. Take care of yourself. Take care. Speak soon. Cheers, guys. Take care. Well, well done. How would you feel? Yeah, I enjoyed it. So uh, you know, it's it's nice to be able to spread the word a bit. You know, Peter. Yeah, definitely, definitely. Yeah, it's good and a nice audience today as well. So interactive. I like that. Definitely. Yeah. Very good. No, so, well done. Well done. Yeah. All good. All good.
Thank you. Right, I will say goodbye to you, and Thanks, we'll catch up and have a pint when we're back I'm, into our normal. Sounds, I can't wait. I'm an, I'm an exer. Only one though. <laughs> <laughs> Cheers, buddy. See you Take later. Bye bye.